upon a lofty throne I saw a man seated, whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison, Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Come, just Father Roy and I this morning to be with you in celebrating this Mass. I'm offering it for the intention of Anne and Basil Casio that they may rest in peace. Father Roy offering it for the well-being of Helen. When I was growing up, I was told that if you arrived uh, in time for the offertory, then you had fulfilled your obligation. Interesting sense, perhaps, of Mass as being uh, an obligation. Interesting sense that um, missing the liturgy of the Word uh, was less important. We'll be reminded this morning in the first reading of the importance of the Word of God, of the power of the Word of God. As we come to hear that word, as we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we pause to reflect on the extraordinary gifts that we are being offered. We reflect too that we are unworthy, but we are offered the gift of God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is something alive and active. It cuts like any double-edged sword, but more finely. It can slip through the place where the soul is divided from the spirit or joints from the marrow. It can judge the secret emotions and thoughts. No created thing can hide from him. Everything is uncovered and open to the eyes of the one to whom we must give account of ourselves. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the fact of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who is incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Your words, O oh Lord, Spirit, Lord, and they are life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. Your, Your words, words are, are Spirit, Spirit, Lord, and they, they are life. life. May the spoken words of my mouth, the thoughts of my heart, win favour in your sight, O oh Lord, my rescuer, my rock. Your, your words, words are Spirit, Spirit Lord. Lord. And they are. 
to your will, O Lord, and teach me your law. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went out to the shore of the lake, and all the people came to him, and he taught them. As he was walking on, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting by the customs house, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. When Jesus was at dinner in his house, a number of tax collectors and sinners were also sitting at the table with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many of them among his followers. When the scribes of the Pharisee party saw him eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, it is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. I did not come to call the virtuous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel, uh, gospel reading with a foreshadowing uh, of the Eucharist as they sit at table with the Lord. That first reading talking uh, about the power, uh, the significance of the Word of God in our lives, uh, very timely for this morning. Father Roy, Father Thomas and I at nine o'clock were leading uh, the sort of enrolment liturgy, the introduction liturgy for the children on their first Holy Communion program this year. Great shame for them that they couldn't be here. There is that wonderful sense of the community gathering when they are all here. Father Roy preached a wonderful homily about the way in which we would then work together, priests, catechists, parents, children, forming that real uh, body of Christ on this journey together uh, to the Lord's table. We may imagine that we are the teachers, as it were, the children are the ones who receive uh, the teaching, but often it's the other way around. Often, particularly as we've experienced over the years with various homilies where you invite the children to make their contributions, um, they have a wisdom and an insight which is inspiring. And I think we should reflect on the effort that they will be putting into celebrating their First Holy Communion, the months that they will be reflecting and learning and praying and preparing all for that moment, the way in which they will come, many of them, uh, dressed very thoughtfully and very carefully, the great reverence that they will show as they have been reminded uh, to do. Of course, it's us that learn from them. Very easy to forget that in our own lives, to forget how significant this moment is, to start to take for granted that we attend Mass each day, that we receive communion when we can, that it has become a regular part of our lives, which is a great blessing. Perhaps to overlook something of its significance, something uh, of the way in which we have this great privilege um, uh, of meeting the Lord. I promised the children that we would pray for them um, in their preparations, Looking back, I should have asked them to pray for us, that we will be inspired and guided by them and their enthusiasm as we come to be reminded uh, of these great gifts, that together we will discover anew the Lord. We pray for a moment for them and on their journey. I promised them that you would pray. I ask the Lord that their example 
may deepen and strengthen our own commitment to this great gift of the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he'd lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, 
For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own here in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension into your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve you with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We need to be slightly careful. Because when there is a congregation gathered, we're not meant to have prayers of the faithful, long homilies or, or indeed uh, notices. Um, that doesn't mean when there isn't a congregation gathered that I can just ramble on as I'm inclined to do. But I did just want to mention uh, the coffee at 11 o'clock. Do please come and join us if you'd like to hobnob with the clergy. Um, it's just an opportunity, particularly um, for, for those who just like to sort of uh, conversation with a few different voices uh, over the weekend. Um, nothing very sophisticated about it, no highbrow topics. Usually what we've had for breakfast, what we're planning for lunch, what we did, whatever, is just social chit-chat. So if you're free for half an hour and would like to join us, 11 o'clock. The Zoom details are, are on the, the parish website. Uh, you just click on that uh, and in you come uh, and just like having coffee after Mass. Wish you a holy and blessed uh, weekend. Pray that the Lord will be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.